Ciao and welcome to Geo's Paintbrush, where five minutes is all it takes to be blown away by one of the world's greatest artists. In today's show, we'll journey to sunny Sarasota, Florida, on the Gulf Coast, to the John and Mabel Ringling Museum of Art, where the personal collection of the circus giant focused primarily, though not exclusively, on European Renaissance and Baroque painting is lovingly displayed for public viewing. The extraordinary thing about this little museum is the concept of contextualism. That is displaying the paintings in rooms rendered architecturally to match not just the historical period, but also key elements depicted in the paintings. So religious art of the Florentine Renaissance, intended for personal devotion, is displayed in a small room closely resembling a Florentine bedroom of the period, while another room nearby is designed and decorated in the same fashion as a cardinal's room, depicted in a painting on display. The notion of exhibiting works in physical spaces in harmony, historically and aesthetically, with the art is an intriguing one to me. Although I suppose the danger is it can be carried too far, detracting from rather than enhancing the paintings with furniture, wallpaper, lighting, and historical curiosities that compete with the art for one's attention. But this is not the case with the Ringling Museum. It's done beautifully, tastefully, and even subtly, serving to enhance the artistic experience for the visitor by exhibiting works closer to in situ, that is, in the original spaces for which they were created or meant to be displayed. While the Ringling counts a number of large-scale Counter-Reformation Rubens, a Titian portrait, an El Greco crucifixion, and a Velazquez among its works, Today we'll focus on a lesser known painter from Florence, Italy, the late Baroque painter Carlo Dolci, whose long life span from 1616 to 1687 and whose long career began around the age of 10 years old. Unlike most Florentine artists, Dolci remained in Florence throughout his life and his simple but richly colored, emotionally evocative religious portraits, nearly always small in scale, were extremely popular in his day. One such work, exhibited at the Ringling, is known as the Blue Madonna, oil on canvas, 21 by 15 and a quarter inches, painted in the 17th century. Thanks for joining us. The lush royal blue of this young Madonna's robe, apropos for the woman Catholics consider to be the Queen of Heaven, is what first drew me toward this piece. It's such a striking, luminescent shade of blue reminiscent of El Greco's use of color to communicate spiritual light in his work. And the robe, with all that blue, comprises most of the composition in this portrait, much more space than Mary's small, narrow face, which appears to emerge almost supernaturally from the shadows within all of this rich blue fabric. Like Caravaggio and his followers, Dolce highlights the powerful presence of his subject and achieves a dramatic level of emotional engagement through contrasting light and dark in his work, so that Mary's pink and white face, in contrast with the blue robe and the black background upon which it is set, provides the light for the entire piece. Mary's face, in fact, provides so much light that it seems to pour through the hood in the back of her robe, creating a halo effect. And take a careful look just to the right of this Madonna's right cheek, in the black background beyond the robe. I see a hint of orange there, like fire, perhaps signifying the presence of the Holy Spirit. Mary appears at peace in this painting, serene, reflective, perfectly contented, as the supernatural light emanates from within her, changing the color of her robe and illuminating the scene. And there's a humility and a resignation to her expression as well, that would have, I think, been intended to serve as an example for devotees, a surrendering of one's will to God that would lead to this state of grace, of complete peace with oneself. But unlike the better-known style of Baroque painting in the Roman tradition, the Florentine style, demonstrated here by Dolce, is more static and does not focus on life-size figures twisting and turning their bodies in powerful action. Instead, Dolce, who was so meticulous and so deliberate that it could take him years to complete a single work, concentrated on highly detailed half-size portraits. And at an early age, 
Dolce elected to restrict his subject matter to religious themes, which almost certainly limited his maturity as an artist, while at the same time making his works much sought after during his own lifetime. Many have panned Dolce's style as saccharine, sentimental, and heavy-handed, lacking subtlety and ambiguity, sort of like the images found on the front of Hallmark greeting cards, or on the cheap religious-themed mirrors or prints found in some church carnivals, or sold to tourists on the side of the road in Mexico. And I can certainly see the point. The Blue Madonna before you, while psychologically revealing, highly detailed, take a close look at Mary's face and at the texture of the robe, and poignant, it's by no means complex. There is no conflict within this Madonna, no sense of wonder, no pained expression, no irony. She appears almost trance-like, and we're robbed of the chance to look into her eyes to see if there's any sense of the suffering, of the passion to come. And some have compared the skin of Dolce's subjects to ivory, unnatural, idealized. But I, for one, don't hold any of this against him. He's captured Mary in a deeply personal moment. And early on, this artist determined that the purpose of art was to inspire faith and devotion, and that his purpose was to devote his life to creating images, painstakingly, that serve this purpose. Dolce chose simplicity of theme, rather consciously, as his end. And while I and others can certainly question the impact that choice had on his development as an artist, and perhaps even long for a more complex vision suited to our 21st notions of religion and faith and art, no one can say with any validity that Carlo Dolci failed to achieve what he set out to do. This is a beautiful painting. Thanks for joining us. I can like I could when I was small and it's so picturesque Looking through the crystal ball, can you